This is the Selkirk Labs Project 006, and I think this is one of Selkirk's most balanced and best paddles to date. However, is it really worth $333 in today's market? Watch the video to find out. Also, if you stay tuned to the end of this video, I'll let you know how you could win one of these paddles. For the specs, we have a 16 millimeter core, weight range of 8.3 to 8.7 ounces, elongated shape, 5.75 inch handle, grip circumference of 4.25 inches, a raw carbon fiber face, polymer core, swing weight of 117, the highest RPM I've ever tested at 2141, a warranty of two years, made in the USA, and additional features include thermoforming and foam injected edge walls. The first thing we have to talk about is this new shape from Selkirk. They're calling it the Tour Shape. This is targeted at their touring pros and tennis players. I find it a little bit odd to call this the Tour Shape when it's basically a rebranded Maxima. Now, there are two things that do set them apart. First, the Tour has a longer handle than the Maxima. On paper, it's listed as 5.75 inches for the Tour and 5.6 inches for the Maxima. When I measure the usable area that you can hold with two hands, I get roughly six inches on the Tour and 5.75 inches on the Maxima. The Tour definitely feels more comfortable to hold for a two-handed backhand. This is great to see because Selkirk hasn't had a high tier pro option with a long handle. They have the Halo and Mach 6, but both of those don't hold a candle to many of the top tier paddles with long handles on the market right now. So I'm glad to see the 006 change that. Now, one of the other differences is that it's slightly less rounded at the head of the Tour compared to the Maxima, but Honestly, no one's really going to care or notice about that. I think one thing we can all agree on is that this shape is generally just ugly. <laughs> Every time I look at this paddle, I feel like I'm staring into a mushroom, and I'm not sure why Selkirk is banking on this shape being the touring pro or tennis player shape. Because in my eyes, the Mach 6 would be much closer to that pro or tennis player ideal shape. Regardless, it really doesn't matter that much because at the end of the day, when you hold it up to other elongated paddles, you really aren't missing much face at all. A lot of people are going to think the head is much smaller, but in reality, it's very similar. After playing with the paddle, I stopped caring about the shape design and it never bothered me. Selkirk has reverted back to their oval grips on the 006 instead of an octagon, and to be honest, I'm really not that bothered by ovals these days. The only thing I can't wrap my head around is why Selkirk doesn't choose to be consistent across their paddles with grip shapes. The Halo, Power Air, 002, 003, and 005 are all octagons, and then the Amped, Vanguard, and 006 are ovals. Not to mention, if this is targeted at touring pros and tennis players, an oval makes much less sense because tennis players are all used to octagons. So I just thought that was a bizarre choice by Selkirk. The other thing we need to talk about is Selkirk has decided to make this paddle a heavier stock option. Since this is targeted toward their pros, they have gone for an average weight of 8.3 to 8.7 ounces. Now you might be going, oh my gosh, it's the Hyperion all over again. And I'm happy to report that the swing weight on two of my 006s are 117. My first one weighed around 8.3 ounces and the second one was 8.5. So despite being nearly as heavy as the original Hyperion, the swing weight was still below 120, which is great to see. I thought I'd mention this because people are still focusing way too much on the static weight when they should be looking at swing weight instead. So don't let the heavy on paper weight fool you. If you like spin, then you're going to love this paddle because it's now officially the highest spinning paddle I have ever tested, achieving a result of 2141 RPM. Not significantly higher than some of the other top tier paddles, but dang, this paddle definitely rips. The three areas that I loved it most were dinks at the kitchen line, drives, and rolls at the net. I also think because of the high spin, this will be one of Selkirk's best paddles for singles. The combination of a long handle and insane spin is going to be a nasty combo. I do want to mention that I have two 006s and the most recent one I got actually came in at 1720 RPM and I talked to Selkirk about it and they said this was likely a manufacturing error. They did say they were going to enforce higher quality control standards on the 006 to maximize spin potential, but I'm sure this is also what every single company would tell me when one of their paddles doesn't meet the performance expectation that the first one met. 
So we'll have to wait and see for more of these to come out and see how the spin holds up. But from what I've heard from other players, the spin has also been ridiculous for them. If I had to place the 006 into a category of paddle, I would call it an all-court paddle that leans slightly more toward control. In fact, I would probably call it the softest thermoformed paddle to date, minus the Scorpius 16mm. What makes the paddle interesting to me is because of the higher weight and long handle, when you really try to rip the ball, you get great plow through, but when it comes to things like dinking and resets, the paddle has a really nice soft touch. It honestly reminds me a lot of the Hyperion, where when you swing hard, the plow through would do great work for you, but otherwise it was generally a softer paddle if you weren't swinging big. You definitely are not getting the same level of pop and power as say a 60 Double Black Diamond, Carbon 1X, Legacy Pro, or Vatic Pro with the 006. For most people, I think the control is where the 006 is going to excel the most, at least more so than the power. One of the areas I loved this paddle the most was at the kitchen line for dinking. Because of the insane topspin you can generate and the exceptional control, moving people around and feeling confident in my dinks was very easy. It really does feel like an in-between of Gen 1 and Gen 2 raw carbon fiber paddles, when I busted out a Rhombus R1.16 to compare, it had noticeably less pop when in hands battles and not as much control as the R1.16. But then when you compare it against the other power thermoformed paddles, it definitely did not hit as hard as those either. I think areas like dinking felt easy because the paddle isn't so poppy that I can't control my dinks. The same can be said about my resets as well. On the flip side, when I go to hit an overhead or drive, I feel like there's adequate power. I just have to work for it slightly more than say a Carbon 1X. For some people, that in-between may be a great compromise if you found the other thermoformed paddles too poppy. To wrap up this power and control section, here's a chart I made to give you my order and ranking of power and control. On the far right, we have power, which is the 002. Far left, we have the 003 for control, and then the 006 sits right in the middle. The power air is just a little below the 002 and the 005 is just barely below the power air. Now I just want to take a quick pause in this video and let you guys know how to find all of my discount codes for the various brands. I get a lot of emails and messages asking if I have a code for this or that brand. If you go to the link in the description, which will take you to my paddle stats spreadsheet, there's a little column or tab you can click that says discount codes, and this will show you all of my discount codes, the percentage, what code to use, and the brand that you can use that code at. So if you're looking to get some discount codes, check out that link in the description. And while you're there, you can check out and compare some other paddles. Because this paddle is listed with such a high stock weight, I wanted to talk about hand speed. Personally, I never found this paddle to be unmanageable and that is due to the 117 swing weight. However, I think there are a lot of people who will hear the stock weight and assume it's too heavy. While there are certainly faster paddles on the market for hand speed, I wouldn't call this a slow one. I actually think it's very reasonable, and in fact, as far as swing weight goes, it's the second lowest swing weight for an elongated thermoformed paddle, only being beat out by the Perseus. If you are coming from a Carbon 1X, Bread and Butter Filth, Ronbus R3 Pulsar, Hyperion, or any other high swing weight elongated paddle, I don't think you'll have any issues with the 006. In fact, it should feel easier to swing than all of those. However, if you are used to square shaped paddles or just low swing weight paddles in general, this may feel heavier to you. Most of it's relative to what you're coming from. As far as the power in hand battles, I think this was the one area that I felt the most negative toward the paddle. When I would pick up my 6 0 double black diamond, the power at the net to put a ball away in a more compact swing felt much greater than when using the 006. I didn't feel that I had to work as hard to get an advantage on my 6 0. I'm not saying there's no power on the 006. I just had to swing a little bit more to get the power that I'm used to. If you compare it to something in Selkirk's lineup like the 002, that would have much more pop at the net for hands battles compared to the 006. So if hand speed and pop at the net is something you value greatly, the 006 might not be the paddle for you. I think the sweet spot on the 006 is good. The only complaint I had is the feedback at the edges isn't a feel that I enjoy. Now, yes, ideally we wouldn't hit that area, but let's be real, we all do, especially when you're 3.5 at best. 
There's something about the stiffness or vibration at the edges that felt more off-putting to me than other paddles. But in terms of energy return, even towards the edges, I thought it performed quite well. So I don't think the overall performance of the sweet spot is bad. It just might have a more off-putting feel depending on the paddle that you're coming from when hitting off center. Now, before we get to my closing thoughts, I'll let you hear from one of my brothers who's finally switching from the Electra Model E to the new 006. What's up guys? Um, I am reviewing the Selkirk 006 today. I used to be using the Electra Model E. That was my primary paddle for probably about a year. I went off and on from it for a while. Pretty much always went back to it no matter what. I used various paddles over the years like the 002, Power Air for a little bit, Double Black Diamond, and then recently the Electra Model E Elite, which was way too poppy for me. And I pretty much always reverted back to the Model E if I was going to play serious. Uh, the thing I about the 006 though, with it being thermoformed, it just it naturally has a little more plow through for me. Even without lead tape, which I will be putting lead tape on it later because it will play a little better. But uh, compared to the other thermoform paddles like the Legacy Vatic, the E Elite, and the Double Black Diamond, I just couldn't get my drops down and my resets down just because they were so poppy compared even when they weren't delaminated. So I'd always go back to the Model E because the resets were so good and the dinking was so good. Uh, this is the first Thermoform paddle that I thought that I could just switch to and pretty much play normal, except the only differences is at the net, my volleys have a lot more pace on them, and then my drives have more pace on them. And those are probably the two things that I was lacking the most uh, currently in my game. So switching over really helped uh, with those things. Spin-wise, uh, felt fantastic. Probably a 20% increase for me uh, in terms of this from the Electrum. The Elite was probably similar, if not maybe a little more for me, depending on if they're new or not. They just get used so much. Yeah, so I'll be permanently switching to the 006 for now. The next turn I'll be using it in for mix for sure and singles. I definitely think if you're using more of a control pedal and you're looking to switch to a thermoform pedal for more pop or more power for whatever reason, that you think that you're gonna get out of it. This is probably the closest one that you'll get feel-wise to like a Model E or paddles similar to it. So I would recommend switching to it. Uh, it is incredibly expensive. So if that's a problem for you, you might just wanna stick with your Model E or whatever pedal you're using, just because 333 is hard to justify just for a, a bit more power plus the control. So with that, the Pickleball Studio is definitely 3.5 at best. After using this paddle for the last month or so, I can confidently say it is in my top five favorite paddles. I think it's extremely fun to use. The spin is addicting, you have reasonable power on demand, and the soft game feels very easy. I also think it's something that Selkirk fans have been begging for, which is a more balanced paddle that sits between the 003 and the Power Air. I think the best comparison I can draw to the 006 would be a super amped up halo with more spin and more power. But despite all of that, I'm having a really hard time recommending this paddle for the price. When the 002 and 003 launched last year, they were a first of their kind. There was nothing that similar to how they played or felt, which made those paddles really unique. With the 006, there isn't an exact paddle that feels like it, but there are paddles on the market that aren't far off and are cheaper. One of the major things going for this paddle that may push you over the edge is Selkirk's two-year warranty on Labs products, which for most people, buying a paddle in this price range, that might as well be a lifetime warranty. Two years from now, the 006 probably won't even be relevant, so more than likely you will have used any warranties that were necessary in a two-year time period. Selkirk has also been known to have one of the more generous warranty processes in Pickleball, so if things like delamination or even more basic things come up or are a concern for you, I have no doubt that Selkirk would probably replace the paddle for you. I also hope that Selkirk did a lot of research to avoid and fix the delaminating issues that people have been experiencing, and hopefully we just won't see them on this paddle, which could also be a selling point, like I mentioned with the Perseus. So to me, part of buying the 006 is going to boil down to how much you care about having a made in the USA paddle as well as a really solid warranty. So here's who I would say this paddle is for. It's for those who want a made in the USA paddle, potentially some of the best spin in the game, a long handle for a two-handed backhand, 
Want an elongated paddle without having a very high swing weight? Prefer an all-court style paddle? and want a longer two-year warranty. In terms of style of play, I think it's great for someone who plays singles and doubles and has a more controlled, aggressive style of play. Someone who can put the ball away when they want, but doesn't mind having the extra control. Whereas the 003 would be for play styles who heavily favor control, and the 002 would be for the banger or highly aggressive player. The 006 to me falls perfectly in between those two. Now I think the 006 isn't for you if you don't like long handles, you want a power paddle, don't care about spin, and budget is a huge concern for you. For me personally, I'll be sticking with my 60 double black diamond. Last year with the 003 when I used it, I genuinely enjoyed that paddle enough that I would have spent my own money to buy it. I can't say the same for the 006, even though I believe it's one of Selkirk's best paddles to date. I just think there's so many similar options for cheaper this time around. So yes, even despite being one of my top five favorite paddles, I think it's going to take a very specific person to want to buy this paddle. I think it's worth demoing if there's one in your area and you can try it, but if you are concerned about price, I think there are paddles that are cheaper that have a similar level of performance. Now, like I said, if you made it to the end of this video, here are the details for the giveaway of a 006. All right, so to enter this giveaway, all you have to do is go follow me on Instagram, go follow Selkirk, as well as go to the link in the description and join my newsletter. This is how I'm going to contact the winner, and next week after I choose the winner, they will have 24 hours to respond to that email before I pick a new winner. Now, I would highly recommend that you guys keep checking your email on the date that this giveaway ends because I actually had someone who didn't see their email and I had to redraft a winner and then they responded a couple days later and I would hate for that to be you. So there are the rules. Make sure to enter down below and I will catch you guys in the next one.